Insistent that her choice of veal is modern, Angela's making roasted fillet of veal with a cheese cream sauce, peas, broad beans, baby artichokes and potato gnocchi. Is that going to be too Italian for the judges? We'll find out on Friday. What about you? We've got a fantastic duck. Oh, wow. We're going to salt the breast using the, um, the Welsh um, Halamon sea salt for that. OK, oh, Fantastic wow. flavour. It penetrates, yeah. it cures the fat. All the hearts, the livers, all going in to make like a sort of a duck hash. Yeah. And some little fried quail's egg. Oh, lovely. On top of the hash. Nice yeah. lunch. Mm. Perfect. Roll on lunch time. Roll on lunch time, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Stephen's making salt duck breast and duck hash with a quail's egg. And he's using peas and broad beans too. Is it a good enough example of 21st century British cooking to serve at Heston's banquet? Well, Stephen's confident. You're not going to get better than the main course. That's your statement, you know, so ultimately, uh, you know, we're both making a statement here. And he thinks he's well qualified to make that statement. Having worked in London with renowned chefs such as Marco Pierre White and Michel Roux Jr, Stephen developed his own style as a Michelin star chef, cooking fantastic ingredients simply. One steak, one chicken on table 28. Stephen still visits Michel when he's in town. I call it Ron Seal cooking because it does what it says on the menu. It's simple, but simple yeah, but isn't always easy, is it? Exactly, that, that's the point. That is the point because simple is probably the most difficult thing for a chef. Simple to get it right. Eight years ago, Stephen decided to leave London for Wales and life with Welsh wife Jo and their two daughters. You want some of this and one of the sandwiches? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want a sandwich without a sneeze in it? Can you three away, please? Yeah. Stephen's always insisted on using the best local ingredients in his renowned gastro pub in the Welsh countryside. It's easy to take it for granted, and you are sort of amongst the produce. But I mean, having been in London for so long, I don't take it for granted. Every day, I thank, I thank my lucky stars. Stephen loves living in Wales, but the country boy thinks he's better qualified for this competition than big city chef Angela, and that she knows it. I think she's very conscious of my history and the people I've worked with and, and, and what I've achieved. You know, I probably am associated with modern British cooking more so than anything else. It's interesting that, you know, obviously both representing Wales and, and people too often associate lamb with Wales. That's the only thing that probably comes out of Wales. And, yeah. and it's quite interesting that we're both sort of highlighting and sort of showcasing two, two other ingredients. Other, because yeah, totally. Both Stephen and Angela are very patriotic and see the competition as a great chance to challenge some stereotypes. Although Angela was brought up in a Welsh-Italian family, she thinks that the two cultures complement one another when it comes to the kitchen. The Welsh have amazing ingredients here, fantastic cheeses, wonderful meats, and I think that's very Italian, that they, they use their produce and do very little with it. And to Angela's way of thinking, that qualifies her very well for this year's competition, because it's now fashionable to do what comes naturally to her. She's the archetypal modern British chef. I think people are looking for much more simple food. They're looking for local food. They're looking for seasonality. Angela worked her way up through the business to win a Michelin star and world renown. But she knows her rival is no walkover. He's had much more of a classically trained background than I have. Then, of course, he's now gone off to do his own thing, and the food's much simpler than he probably cooked 15 years ago, but he has all that to draw on. Still, Angela knows that with her pedigree and experience, Stephen won't be taking her for granted either. You know, he'll have analysed where I'm coming from, I'm sure. He's probably got a big chart in his kitchen, you know, me, my face in the middle with darts and it, sort of what was she, <laughs> she could.